اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان لا اله الا الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله اشهد ان محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاه حي على الصلاه حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله اكبر الله اكبر لا اله الا الله ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All praises due to Allah We praise Him, we seek His help and we seek His forgiveness We seek refuge in Allah from the evil of ourselves and from our bad deeds Whoever Allah guides, there is no one that can lead him astray And whoever Allah allows to go astray, no one can guide I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship and obedience except Allah He's alone without any partners, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger. O oh, you who believe, fear Allah as he should be feared. Put a shield between yourselves and Allah's punishment by doing what he commands and staying away from what he forbids. And do not die except in a state of submission as Muslims. O oh, mankind, fear your, Lord whom you dem- fear your Lord who created you from a single soul, and from it created its mate, and from them both spread many men and women. And fear your Lord from whom you demand your mutual rights. And do not cut off your family ties. Indeed, Allah is ever watchful over you. O you who believe, fear Allah and say that which is correct. If you do so, Allah will rectify your deeds and forgive you of your sins. Whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has attained the highest success. The best narrative is the speech of Allah in the Quran. And the best guidance is the example of our beloved Messenger Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The worst affairs are issues that people introduce into this complete way of life Islam every introduced matter in the religion leads astray and everything that leads astray leads to the fire we seek refuge in Allah from the fire and we ask him as he has gathered us here today to to gather us in a better place in the highest gardens of paradise in Al-Firdaus brothers and sisters Allah Azza wa Jal declares that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is not the father of any man in this ummah. And he says, 
ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين In fact, Muhammad is not the father of any of you. What he is, is he is the messenger of Allah and he is the final, the seal of prophets. Now, when it means he's not the father of anyone, it means he's not the biological father of anyone, and it means he's not the adoptive father of anyone. When we read the reason behind Revelation and the story of Zayd, may Allah be pleased with him. So, the Prophet ﷺ witnessed the death of his male children in his lifetime, and that's why he does not have male children. However, figuratively speaking, the Messenger والسلام, is the father to all believers. And it was known in his practice that he would call the younger companions, Ya Bunay, O oh my son, such as Ibn Abbas and Anas and others. And likewise, the companions used to treat him as a father. So when we say figuratively he was a father to the believers, it means the respect that a father gets the love that a father gets, but more importantly, the relationship of the father towards his children, which is that care, that concern, that mercy, and that love, from the father towards his children. Allah Azza wa Jal makes this idea clear, where he says, The messenger is more worthy of the believers than they are worthy of themselves. And his wives take the place of their mothers. That's why when we mention a name of one of the mothers of the believers, the wives of the Messenger والسلام, we say she's our mother. So Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, is our mother, and, as, and um, um Salama, and so forth. But here the Messenger والسلام, is awla bil mu'minina min anfusihim. Many of the scholars said, what is intended here is he is just like their father Now to explain this concept even further, Allah Azza wa reminds the believers and he says لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفُ الرَّحِيمِ A messenger has come to you from amongst yourselves speaking of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ it grieves him, it saddens him whenever a difficult situation befalls you. Whenever you suffer, he feels the pain. Harisun alaykum, he is very concerned about your affairs, about your well-being, about your success. Bil mu'minina ra'ufur rahim, he's very kind and he's very merciful towards the believers. This is the description of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the stories, and there are many stories in the biography and the life story of the Messenger والسلام, that stands out and it's the reason, if you will, behind the revelation of the first verse I recited, the story of Zayd. Zayd happened to be a child that was basically in the class of slaves in that day. And the Prophet والسلام, adopted him in the pre-Islamic era. And he was known as Zayd ibn Muhammad. Zayd, the son of Muhammad. But Allah Azza wa Jal, through revelation, negated that. He negated that Muhammad is the father of anyone, and in so doing, he negated that false practice of the pre-Islamic era of Jahiliyyah, of adopting children that are not yours for some type of benefit. It does not mean you don't take care of children. But Zayd had the option of returning to his family. And he started being called Zayd ibn Haritha. So he had the option, his parents came, his father came, his uncles came, and they wanted to take him. Okay, now you guys are Muslim, you know, you should give us our rights and this and that. This happened prior to Islam and your tribe stole our child. So the Messenger والسلام, was so kind that he didn't want to make a decision on his own. He said, ask him, let him make a choice. Let Zayd make, make a choice. And Zayd made the choice. He decided to leave his parents to leave his family and to leave his people and to stay with the Messenger He was so beloved to the Messenger His son Usama later on became also very beloved to the Messenger even though he was not his biological son. What made Zayd love the Messenger so much? This is just a, a question. What made him love him so much? The answer is وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Allah Azza wa Jal describes him, 
Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He says, indeed, you are on a very high calib caliber of manners, of ethics, of character. The greatest character is in you. And the Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam made this a living example. Everyone felt this way towards him. Whether they were close or far away, his most severe enemies became his companions. And they were in love with him, so much so that they would offer and sacrifice their, themselves, their lives, to protect him, to defend him, to defend his honor and to defend him physically on the battlefield. They will be bleeding right in front of him, about to die, and they would say, what happened to the messenger? And by the way, this was not the example of the men folk only. Women in the time of the Messenger والسلام, defended him. They all loved him. They would defend him by any means necessary. The point behind that was That beautiful character that he had. That simple, natural character. He did not have the character of kings. One time an ambassador from the non-believers in the battle or the treaty of Hudaybiyah came and witnessed how the messenger was treated by his companion. So he goes back and he says, My people, I've seen kings before. You've sent me to be a delegate before, delegate before. I've seen Caesar. I've seen the kings of Persia and the kings of Africa, of Abyssinia. But I have never seen a king treated better and revered more than Muhammad وسلم, is treated, respected, and loved by his companions. And he described what they did that made him feel this way. Now they did this out of love, but this love was true love. True love for that character, alayhi salatu wasalam. We ask Allah Azza wa to raise his rank, to bless him, to shower him with mercy and with grace, to elevate his rank and to make us from amongst his true followers. Sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And we ask Allah to bless his companions and to bless his family, the righteous amongst them, and to, to bless all of his righteous followers to the last day. The messenger alayhi salatu wasalam had a message. He was a messenger. He had something that he was calling to. The secret or one of the secrets behind his success and people answering his call, accepting his invita invitation, was that beautiful character that we're speaking about. It was the prime example. Nothing can even compare to him. And by the way, people saw him at different stages of life. People saw him when he was rich and when he was poor. They saw him when he was strong and when he was weak. They saw him when he was healthy and when he was sick. They saw him living and they saw him dying. But you know what? Throughout these stages of life that all human beings go through, they saw him in exile and they saw him as someone who's settled down. That character never changed. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ It never changed. Not even once. Even when he was upset, it did not change. He did not cross the boundaries. He did not cross the red lines. He kept true to the promise of Allah Azza wa making him the best example. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Not only that, the Messenger Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and of course it's a great good deed to send salutations of peace and blessings upon him all the time, but especially on this day. So when you hear his name, say Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even if it's in your heart because the etiquette and the khutbah is that you don't speak. But this is just a reminder for all of us. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's very difficult to describe, you know. We have many people who are motivational speakers, inspirational speakers, life coaches, teachers that can leave an impact on us. They tell us what to do and what not to do. And we all need that in the form of education. There is no doubt about that. But what we're more in need of as humankind, in general, is manners, ethics, morals, values, high character. The Messenger ﷺ summarized his whole message or the objective of his message. And he said, I was only sent, only sent, and underline that, to perfect, noble, and high character. So of course, somebody might bring the argument, so what about acts of worship? What about worshiping Allah alone without any partners? That's perfection of manners. Because if you don't have manners with your Creator, you're not going to have manners with anyone else. No matter how hard you try. Because you haven't given the rights to the one who deserves the most rights. Azza wa Jal. So, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us and he was 
a living example. His story, his life story still lives amongst us. Alhamdulillah, we've been blessed that Allah preserved it. The first source for his life story is the Quran and then the works of the scholars where they describe every single detail about him. Physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Everything is described. They counted the number of white hairs on his head, his beard, and his body. That's recorded. Everything about him is recorded. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is part of our religion, to be acquainted with him, to know him. Even though we did not live in his lifetime, but to be aware of who he is. And who he is not. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, what we need in our community, in society at large, is those role models who live up to that standard. Who can live up to that sunnah of the Messenger alayhi salatu wa And this is what society in large needs. They need role models. People need examples. Because your teacher might be influential, but when you find out too much about their life story, you're like, maybe I need to wait a minute. The messenger, his private life was known to everyone. It was public. Forget reality TV. Because reality TV, they only show you part of reality TV. And they're acting anyway. The messenger lived his life and it was an open book. For all to see. His enemies and his friends. And when people really found out about it, they wanted to be his friends. They did not want to have any enmity with him. Now we ask Allah Azza wa to guide us all to follow his example. We ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us more aware of who he was alayhi salatu was salam. And we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to bless him for bringing us this guidance and bringing us this ethics, manners and values. Sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد All praises due to Allah the Lord of everything in existence and I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship and obedience except Allah he's alone without any partners and I bear witness that Muhammad is his servant and his messenger and I ask Allah to shower Muhammad with his blessings and with his mercy and with his grace, to raise his rank, to raise his name, and to bless him and to protect him along with his family, his companions, and all those who follow his guidance to the last day. Brothers and sisters, we have to become more aware of the Messenger alayhi salatu We have to know who he is. We cannot just claim to love him without knowing everything about him. And it's not important it's not a requirement, it's not even recommended to celebrate one day out of the year as the day when he was born. You know why? Because the day he was born is not what really matters. It was the day that he was sent that matters. Where Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We only have sent you as a mercy to all of creation. So it was that sending, making him into a messenger, that was a great blessing. Now people, a lot of times, because they realize that they have shortcomings, they try to make up and they try to do a shortcut. So we'll be like, okay, so we'll celebrate, we'll recognize him for one day out of the year and then we'll forget about him for the rest of the year. That's not appropriate. That's not proper etiquette with the one who brought us every good thing that we know in life. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah made him a means to bring us everything that is good and to tell us about everything that is bad and evil. We should celebrate his legacy every single day. And the way to celebrate his birthday is to fast on Mondays, because that's what he did. That's the thing that he celebrated about his birth. From the, recording te the recorded teachings, he said, I fast on Mondays because that was a day that I was born on. So that, was, that comes every week, not once a year. But he never celebrated an occasion called his birth. Not yearly, not bi-yearly, nothing like that. His companions, the ones who loved him the most, we said, they would sacrifice their lives for him, never did that. And none of the righteous in the past did that either. So let's stick to their example. But what they did, and the younger companions used to say to their children, they said, we were taught the Qur'an and we were taught the biography by the, of the Messenger wasallam." Because those two things, by the way, all Muslims, the whole Ummah does not disagree on. You realize that. Other things, we might have differences of opinion. But the historical record of Muhammad wasallam for the most part is preserved like the Qur'an is preserved. And there is no difference of opinion on these two things. 
So we should concentrate on studying these two things, reading them, reflecting on them, and responding to them by implementing, implementing what they teach. The Messenger is a great example, sallallahu alayhi wa We have to invest time into learning who he was, what he was like, what he liked and what he disliked. Because remember, we're all going to be asked one day, after we die, what do you say about this man that was sent to you? And the only way you can have the correct answer is not by memorizing information. Manners, character is not something to be memorized. It's not something that we can write in a book form and define. It's something that's practiced. It's something that people are taught through having a role model that they see. You're going to be asked about this man. What do you have to answer? We have a lot of negative publicity about him, sallallahu alayhi wa The news, the media, what have you, it's full of it. It's all the wrong stuff. And that's what our children are used to. That's what they hear. How can you give the right answers? Can you just tell your son or your daughter, I'm sorry, but they're not saying the truth. What is the truth? Who knows the truth? Invest more time in studying the seerah, the biography, the life story of the Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. Reflect over it. Don't read it and have your main... When am I going to finish this book? But read small portions of it and reflect over it and see what life lessons you can derive from it. And then you can say that you're a true follower. You're celebrating him, alayhi salatu wasalam. You're celebrating what he brought. Because it wasn't his practice to celebrate individuals. It was to celebrate their achievement. And his greatest achievement was to raise a nation that's the best nation that was raised for the benefit of humanity. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh Allah, we ask you to bless him, to shower him with peace and with blessings. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasanatan wa fil akhirati hasanatan wa qina adab al nar. We ask you, Allah, to grant us the good of this life and the good of the next life and to save us from the fire. Rabbana la tuzik qulubana ba'da idh hadaytana wa hablana min ladunka rahmatan innaka anta al wahab. We ask you, Allah, not to misguide our hearts after you've guided us and to grant us mercy from you. You're the one who provides. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِنْ لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Oh Allah, we've wronged ourselves. We transgressed your limits. We've sinned and we're admitting to that. And if you don't have mercy on us and you don't forgive us, we'll be amongst the losers. اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا به جنتك ومن اليقين ما تهون به علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا اللهم بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقواتنا ما أبقيتنا واجعلها الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عادانا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا واجعل الجنة هي دارنا وقرارنا واغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات Oh Allah, we ask you to grant us from your fear that which prevents us from sinning against you and we ask you to grant us from acts of obedience that will reach us to your paradise and we ask you to let us enjoy our strength our vision, our hearing, and all the blessings that you've given us to the fullest. And we ask you not to have enmity except with those that have wronged us. And we ask you to give us victory over them. And we ask you not to make this material life our biggest concern. And not to make hell our destination, but to make paradise our final abode. And we ask you, O oh Allah, not to make our trouble through our religion, but to make our religion a peace of mind and to make it a solution for our troubles. And we ask you to have mercy on the believers, those who have passed. And we ask you to allow us to live by your deen and to die upon it. Wallahu a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.